everyone. It's a new day in Pixar, and it looks like we came in right when the storm got over with, so I'm happy about that. It's a nice, beautiful, sunshiny day now, and hopefully it'll stay that way for a little bit, because we have a lot of things to do today. In the last episode, we built our um, really fun wizard tower. Oh my, I think it is starting to rain again. <laughs> well, that's okay. We'll just power through. But last episode, we did build the, the fun wizard tower. And today, we're going to finish that up. So what we're going to do is I, I l painted a lot of the steps and a lot of the foundations, but I wanted to show you how to go about doing that. So what this is the way that the foundations look before I painted them. But I think the blue looks really pretty with the blue accents on the doors and on the ceilings. So I think that looks a little bit better than the just the tannish color. A little bit more fun. So I thought I would um, show you how I did this. So in order to paint these under here, you have to remove, remember, if you remember in the last episode, we had to go ahead and place our Pix Block container. See all the fun animals we have in our Pix Block container? It's holding them all safe and sound for us. But we had to place it before we placed the walls. So now, and, and already had placed the floors too. So now what you do is you, what you want to do is you have to pick them up in order to paint. So I had picked these up along this edge and now I've placed them down. Let's put the rest of the foundations down here so that we can well, well we need to go ahead and paint these first though so let's go ahead and paint these and then we can place the rest of them down and finish painting them. Okay so we're going to use our spray paint gun. Uh, it's in my number three slot and what it will do it will bring up these regions and different structures will have different regions that are paintable. Right now, so far here in uh, Pixar, hardly anything has specific regions yet. And so I found for these foundations, there's no need to really even change or worry about the color regions. If you do find something that does have different regions to paint, then what you will what you will want to do is first you want to make sure you have the right color. Um, what you do is you take your paint and you the color you want and move it down into your spray gun and that'll activate it. So we put one blue dye in the spray gun and then you show it shows the color regions that are enabled. So like the top, the bottom, the sides, it, everything will have different regions in Pixar. This one, these blocks don't have any particular regions, but if you wanted to change your region, what you do is you right click the mouse button and then your numbers that co coordinate with the blue lettering that says color region one, color region two. If you click color region one, if you click the number one button, then that goes to disabled. If you click the number two button, that enables. So as you're holding down the right mouse key, you can actually enable or disable as I go down the row, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then that will enable or disable whatever regions that you want to paint. So then you just point your mouse, your uh, marker at your whatever you're painting and left click this time. Don't right click, but you left click and it'll paint that item for you. Isn't that fun? So we paint it up to here and then see I can actually paint these under here. So we got all those painted and I had to remove these in order to get to those because otherwise it was hard to get to those. So let's go ahead and place these um, down that we had pulled up before. Now we can paint them. So I click number three again and we're all set because like I say there's no, we don't have to enable any particular regions on these and you just point and spray point and left click and you're all set let's go out here and we'll finish the stairs we did these yeah like that and let's go ahead and paint these also and I think that's all the painting we need to do today let's 
see here. Yes. Now, doesn't that look nice? Much better than the tan brownish color, don't you think? I think that works. It's kind of fun that, that this particular color of blue matches the blue in the Mediterranean build. So, that's, that's pretty much finishes up our building until they fix. Of course, you saw in the other previous episode about the dome roof. We still want to do that if they fix it so that it will snap on there. All right, let's put away our paint gun. Now that we've finished painting the floors and pretty much the building is finished, what we next want to do is put in the furniture, the furnishings for the Magic Wizard Room, our Magic Wizard Tower. <laughs> First of all, let's put in some storage. We're going to need lots of storage. Make sure when you place it, it, when you place your storage, I don't know why, but for some reason, storage seems to be placing um, backwards. So you want to make sure that it is facing frontwards. Let's see here. And let's, let's, there we go. And that appears, it looks like the knobs are facing toward us now. Let me get... Let me see here. Yeah, see the little shelving at the top, the little decoration? That, that's at the front, so that way that tells us that's at the front. All right, there we go. Yes, that's nice. Let's put the other one over here. It just fits perfectly right here, don't you all guys think? There we go. Now that's storage, and we're going to need storage for all of our magic items. Now we want to place our magic furniture, our things that have magic to, to do with magic. And so we want to be sure and have placement that right exactly the way we want it. So be sure and know that you can click E um, for each item and just be careful. You, that there, it's not too hard to gather the things again that Pixar has made it pretty easy and, and uh, not so grindy if you do misplace. Don't worry, right now it's demolish only for these items, but hopefully that w there will be a pickup option for these because it would be make it a lot more fun, and I mean, seems like you should be able to pick items up. But for now, let's just start placing. There's our inscription book. This, um, this is called Let's see, the alchemy stove is a little bit difficult because for some reason, if you put it too close to a wall, like in that corner, it won't fit. You can see it's barely touching the edge. So hopefully they'll fix that. So you have to pull it out one square. Let's face it around this way so we can face it. When we're working at the table, we can look out the window. So let's face that there. And what, what I'm doing is I'm also being very aware of the pull range for these items. I've already placed them before and counted and to see, but let me show you. You want to make sure, and the best thing to do in order to do that is to place the items first. <laughs> we should have probably done that first. I already knew where to place them, so I didn't even think about that. I, but if I'd have placed them first, then I could have showed you it, you have an able ability to see where the placement of the pull range is for each of your crafting tables. And I'm trying to get into a place that you guys can see this. But see how far it goes? It goes out pretty far. But you just want to make sure that any storage that you're going to have in connection with that crafting table is within that placement range. So it, it goes quite a it goes quite a ways, but you don't want to get too far away from your storage or just make sure that you do have storage. See, it doesn't even go out this direction. But if we let's turn that one off and we'll do a show nearby range off. Let's try this one and I'll show you where the enable show nearby range. And that way you can see, and anything within the range, if you put a storage box within this wall, that means that that crafting table will pull resources in, that's inside that wall out of those storage buildings. So that makes it so nice. And that's kind of what I had in mind when I put these particular storage 
boxes here and I want to just make sure that that they're they are within range let's take away that one we also want to put down um, let's see this item is called um, let's look and see I want to make sure this item is called a crucible and we want to make sure and have it within range also we don't want it too far away so let's place it here I believe this is within distance really the best thing to do is place your crafting benches first and then show the range and make sure see the range goes out to this this block here so that is barely in our range of our crafting of our storage boxes so you want to make sure see it's it's barely in there but it is in that range so let's turn that range off so it's not in our way and we want to place place the last last piece of furniture it's our uh, magic table well maybe maybe like that no it won't go like that hmm I wonder if it's in the range see if I had if I place the table first then I would know but I do want my storage benches there no matter so really since I know that that's right I think there that's that kind of looks nice don't you think I, I actually like that now let's check the range to make sure let's go outside it's easier to see outside so so far so good hopefully it will extend past where our storage boxes are and I think it does look at that yep it does so anything we put um, in our storage boxes it will show so some of the things that you make at the magic workbench are poison bullets ice bullets fire bullets so I'm not sure right now if I have these items but to show you but uh, we could gather some items up and see um, I'm just now starting to get into the magic thing so I don't have these items in the inscription book we're going to be able to summon plague zombie I wonder what that does a magic scroll that can summon a plague zombie to fight for you one day oh my goodness that sounds scary and then this magic scroll summons a skeleton and this oh no wait that said zombie didn't it oh yeah plague zombie oh okay it's just a plain zombie <laughs> so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have to gather these resources up and bring you back and do another video showing how those work let's see how the crucible what the, does the crucible do oh I see we have vigor potions healing potions oh sleepy potions and then werewolf potions drink this to transform into a werewolf oh my gosh that would be super fun wouldn't it let's see and then scuba potion it increases your swimming ability power potion it increases your melee damage and it's effective for 10 minutes that would be really good to have then swiftness potion oh movement speed oh my goodness that would definitely come in handy the load potion hmm max load to oh for weight gosh that would be great and then craftsman post potion it increases item crafting speed well that would be fun too so it looks like all of these things take special kinds of grass leaf glass bottles so we're gonna have to definitely learn how to make glass bottles that takes crystals and leaves all of these take gold leaves hmm we'll have to look into where you find gold leaves grasses blue ray thorn goodness chilling grass all of these take grasses oh no magic cores you know I think I found a bunch of those I have I don't have the werewolf blood though oh my gosh werewolves are so scary narco berries and carry on oh that's we have a lot of that and tinto berries with a glass bottle and stem berries with a glass bottle so definitely those are fun things to try to get together and get together resources oh I think this does this is this the one that or is this a crafting table has the 
range on it. So that was going to get in our way. What is the alchemy stove? Let's see here. Oh, you know what? I have found some of these things. Dark magic stone essence. Hmm. Water magic stone essence. Decreases target movement speed. Ooh, that would be good. Wind magic stone essence. Wind energy deals a large amount of damage but is weak against structures. Hmm. That sounds like more of a PvP thing. Uh, this is a powder full of electric energy. Increases the target's torpidity and deals increased damage against wood structures. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. This one also damage against wood structures. The This is a light energy. It doesn't deal damage but can heal. Oh, gosh. That would be really good when we're taming things and get hit by dragons, right? And then this powder full of earth energy deals increased damage against stone structures. So a lot of those things are what you would use probably in PvP. But though, that's very interesting that we can make all of that. That's so fun. I also wanted to show you real quick these Mediterranean storage boxes. I was really hoping that they were going to be extra, have extra amount of slots, but they don't. They only have 50, which is normal for the regular storage boxes. But I just wanted to show you that. So we definitely need to fill those storage boxes full of all this magic grass and magic glass bottles. And then when we access, like if we open the inscription book, we won't have to actually have those items on our inventory. They can be in the storage boxes. So that will work out great. So what do you guys think of our magic wizard tower building room? <laughs> I think it turned out really, really nice. And I'm so glad to have all of the magic items in one place now as I gather them up. I'll be able to put everything here. I won't even have to worry about it where it is. Everything will be in one place. And I think that'll work out so much better. I did want to show you one thing that I neglected to show you before. I think I can, let's see, can I show you right here? Um, oh, goodness, where can I show? Oh, I know, I'll show you right over here. I want it to be able to see it really well. If When when we were building before, I didn't. I neglected to show you that the walls that we were putting down over here, the, 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 the white blocks, they're solid white. They're, you can use them different ways. Make sure anytime you're building something, so that's number six in our um, tool slot. Anything, anytime that you are building something and the letter Q comes up, I, I don't know if you can see it, they're on, kind of on the left hand side with the two arrows, there's a Q. That means you can change the look of the block. So that see how it's changing? That gives you different looks. The first one is the white blocks that we built with. And then if I change the Q once, that shows that shows that block. If I let's move over here so you'll be able to see them. If I change the Q again, it shows you it looks that way. And then again, it looks like this. And that I like this one. That kind whoops. Went the wrong way. That one kind of looks like a column, doesn't it? And I think that's all. I think that's the different ones. Yes. Yes. So that's the different types of Mediterranean blocks that you can build out of just one block. It gives you four designs. Isn't that fun? So I really like how that Pixar is doing that. But I like the column thing. I think that, I wonder about maybe if we could build some kind of little porch. See how the front looks kind of flat on the front, doesn't it? I wonder if we couldn't put some columns on the front and maybe extend a little roof. I have to think about that and see. Maybe that would move this tree out of the way. I kept having to keep having to uh, chop this tree down because it keeps getting in my way. <laughs> so maybe if I extend this out and make a little porch, our little path area out here, and then. Um, have some kind of a, I'm not sure, I haven't figured a, a really a rounded root, a rounded little porch area would be fun, but I don't think we have any rounded things. This is all squares and cubes, right? So anyway, I wanted to be sure and show you those because I totally forgot to show you that when I was building the, the wizard tower. 
and uh, be sure if you have it if you didn't watch us build that then be sure and check on the last episode and you'll be able to watch us build that I think that'll be all for today guys this has been very fun and hopefully informative for you it's so fun making these little videos and I so appreciate each and every one of you so very very much I'll see you next time bye